I think one of the main things we wanted to do really was it wasn't about technology and it wasn't about iPads. It was about trying to make our teaching and learning as exciting as possible. Um, and one of the key things that we really wanted to do was ensure that our students were independent. Um, and we've done lots of things linked to that. So we've done lots of teacher training. We've done lots of things about managing groups. But actually, fundamentally, what you realise is that you can't do all the things you want to do without the technology. And that was what was really interesting that even though we could say to teachers we want students to go off and do research, we want students to go off and create their own questions, we want students to be able to kind of explore a subject themselves, essentially without the technology you couldn't do that. And the more we came to that realisation, we appreciated that actually you had to have the iPads to be able to kind of have the pedagogy that you wanted. Um, and so what we did was we introduced it first of all with years eight and nine, um, and what was really interesting with that was that even though we had a trial in the first instance, teachers were basically coming back, and it, and it was coming from the teachers, so not from the sort of senior management team, that um, this is working so well, we want to do this with everybody now, we want to do this with year 10, we want to do this with year 11, because we can see the benefits. So, so the pedagogy came first, the ideas about what we want to do with students, um, but the iPad was a perfect tool with which to do it. Self-directed learning for us is about empowering students to have a voice in their learning. We want to enable them to choose pathways through their learning. That might be as part of a lesson or a wider topic. So students can move through a course in the manner and speed that they find suits their learning best. So some students are more visual learners, some students are kinesthetic learners. Um, and if, student, if teachers allow students to progress through that and choose their own pathway through several different projects, um, that means that students can move more at a, more of a pace through the ones that they find simple. They can spend longer on the ones that they find difficult. They can produce work in a style that suits their learning style. So I might be a, um, better at presenting, whereas someone else might not be happy presenting, so they might prefer to write something down or produce a video. Teachers are reporting that outcomes in lessons are improving. So where there's a tablet device element, to that lesson, teachers report that the outcome of the lesson is of a higher standard. We spent a lot of time as faculties in our schemes of learning meeting, looking at our schemes of work and thinking how can we give students the opportunity to be more self-directed within these lessons. Then, looking at how we could give the students the opportunity to be more self-directed, we could say, is there any tools in our toolkit, iPads being one of them, that can allow students the ability to be able to succeed in being more self-directed. Therefore, if you look at our schemes of learning now, you'll find the traditional scheme of learning layout, but you'll also find opportunities for self-directed learning and opportunities for tablet use to support the pedagogy in that lesson. You might have seen in the lesson we did, for example, students wrote on the desks. This was another tool we felt as teachers that we had in our toolkit to support something like group work. The iPads can also be great for helping with group work. We can send, in a group, a different number of students off to a different resource base, finding out a greater richness of information than they would have done before, before returning to their original group and sharing that information. In the learning pyramid, we all know that students that can find out information themselves and teach each other have far greater retention of that knowledge than if the teacher stands at the front and just le lectures them. So the lesson we did with Year 8 was the end of a uh, scheme of learning that they've been doing about Malham in Yorkshire, where the outcomes have to be, they have to explain how they would improve the management of tourism in Malham. We would have done this unit before, uh, last year for example, where all students would have used the same resources, the same learning styles, and produced exactly the same outcome. What we've done with the iPad is we've been able to say to them, here's a resource and here's the outcome that we expect you to achieve. But how you do that, how you gather your ideas and synthesize the information and organize what you're going to put is up to you. Edmodo was fundamental to the lesson that you saw. Edmodo is a closed social network app. So it's a bit like Facebook, but just for your school. Students become friends with classes, but not each other. So I've created a page or a timeline for each of my classes and all my students have become friends with that class. What Edmodo does is it gives students tremendous access to resources both in school and outside of school. For the lesson that we used yesterday, you can see on Edmodo I've posted the success criteria for that whole scheme of learning, including what students are expected to do during the scheme of learning. 
and the actual success and mark criteria that I will use during uh, the process of going through those lessons. Students have had access to this before we even started this scheme of learning and throughout, both at school and at home. I can also provide a range of materials to support the lesson. For example, here, I've put on access to linking words for students' paragraphs should they need that support during the lesson. What students had to do in the feedback lesson was they had to take uh, what I'd looked at in their work and say, you, to improve this, you need to complete this task. Sometimes we get students to do this in what we call a feedback book, but today we've used Edmodo because we wanted the students to collaboratively look at each other's ideas and comment on them further. Here you can see that this student has been told to look at uh, the conflicts between two different groups to do with tourism in Malum, and a fellow student has commented and improved that work further. By reading through, everyone will have improved their work and hopefully pushed on to help somebody else improve theirs. Actually, students are genuinely independent, genuinely engaged and actually shaping their own experience. So you never see a lesson where a um, teacher is standing at the front of the room sort of lecturing for, for 20 minutes. What you see is teachers saying, right, OK, this is the thing that we're going to do today. Um, how would you like to go about doing it? And what we're starting to see as outcomes is that actually the quality of what students produce is so much better because they are genuinely understanding things. So they're not just learning about World War One by rose. They're actually able to see um, footage. They're able to kind of explore um, a kind of area of interest that they've discovered. So I think with that ownership comes really good quality outcomes. So we're seeing, we still see really good written work. So we're not losing all of that. We're still getting really good kind of content knowledge for students but what we're starting to see is that they are just really enthusiastic um, and that thirst for knowledge is really important I think.